All my life, I've been carried by grace. Don't ask me how, because I can't explain. It's nothing short of a miracle. I'm here. You may recognize those as some lyrics from um, a song called Million Little Miracles by Maverick City Music. And um, in preparing, I've just been sitting listening to the song again and again and again. And I want to ask you, what comes to mind when I say the word miracle? And chatting to some people recently, I realized we don't necessarily all have the same definition of what this means. So maybe what comes to mind is Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, the feeding of the 5,000, walking on water. That's a pretty good one for me. Maybe healing in your own life from addiction, uh, the prodigal son in your own life coming home. And, but what actually is a miracle? How do we know a miracle has occurred? How do we know God's done a miracle in our lives? And technically, the definition is an event not explainable solely by natural processes, but requiring the supernatural intervention of God. And I summarize that as it's not possible in the natural or in our own strength. And so I just want to share how Jesus brings miracles and just share a little bit of a testimony from my own life from this year. And for a large part of this year, I've been applying to do my MBA, and I'm hoping to start next year. And part of the application is an entrance exam called the GMAT, my nemesis, um, which is a computer adaptive test intended to assess skills. And I always knew for me that this would be the most difficult part because I haven't written an exam in almost 15 years, and I was super nervous, and I knew it was going to be really, really hard because my degree was practical, and so I literally have not written an exam since matric in 2009. Yes, you can work out how old I am now. <laughs> so after studying for six months, I finally went and wrote this guy, and my result was 23% lower than the average of the school that I'd hoped to get into. Damn. <laughs> So I went back and I gathered up my wits and I started studying and then I finally rewrote again in September and I went in feeling confident and I was like, I've got this, I'm gonna do it. This time, 6% lower than the first time. I was crushed. I literally, I thought my dream had died. Um, one of my incredible best friends, Ash, is here tonight, and she sat on the phone with me many a night, crying my eyeballs out, going, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. This dream is dead. It's gone. There's no more possibility. And so I decided to take a break from studying because I felt like I needed to achieve something. Yes, I'm an A-type. Um, and I needed to reconsider my strategy and what I was going to do in the future. And unfortunately, at the same time, work got really hectic, and I had some family issues that needed my attention, and I wasn't getting back to studying, and I wasn't being able to put in the time. And I kept clinging on to the little faith that I had, and I begged God for a miracle, because I honestly didn't believe it was possible anymore. And it was one night when I was just going, I don't know what I'm going to do. And God said to me, okay, but you've got to let me do the miracle. And I was like, ooh, that was an owie one. <laughs> God just said to me, submit your application. You're asking me for a miracle, but I can't do it if you don't submit. I was holding off on pressing submit, doggedly insisting that I could keep studying, that I could try again, that I could do better, that I could increase my score, that it would become possible, that I, in my own spirit strength, I could get there and I could make it happen. But then, it wouldn't have been a miracle. And so I want to turn to scripture for a second, to another miracle, arguably one of the greatest in history and one that we're going to celebrate this coming week. Matthew 1.18 says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Immaculate conception. Pretty obvious miracle, I think, but I'm not going to talk about that one. If we look at the cultural context of the time, Joseph only really had two options at this point in time, because we all know nobody believed that Mary got pregnant by I don't know, some spirit, let's be honest. And so all his options were to either break off the engagement and bring shame upon her, or to have her stoned. Those were his only options. And now we all know what happens next, the very next verse. Our main man, Gabriel, not this one, rocks up and tells him, tells her, tells him that he can marry Mary and that she's telling the truth. But if we look at it, there's another miracle here and something I want to zoom in on it. There was a third option that was presented. Joseph didn't have a third option. Marrying her wasn't in the picture. And so he hadn't considered the possibility that this, this could happen and, and what it would mean. And so what is so amazing to me is the commentary on this verse says Joseph believed and obeyed. He chose to marry her 
He, he had to believe the, the, the angel. He had to believe that she was telling the truth. And then he had to make the decision to still marry her despite what everyone else in the neighborhood was probably going to say. And in my own situation, I didn't see the third option. I didn't see the miracle. I couldn't submit. I didn't have the score. It wasn't possible. I couldn't let this dream go to die. And so, don't worry, the irony is not lost in, on me. Yes, I had to physically click submit on my application, but it was so much more than that in my life. I really had to allow God to do the work and I had to submit in my spirit and I had to allow him to do the miracle. And so I want to ask you tonight, where do you need to submit to God? Is there something that you're holding on to, that you're trying as hard as you can to make happen in your own strength, that you just keep trying to make it happen in the possible and you just feel like it's impossible and you're tired and you're trying to make it work and it's just not working? I want to tell you tonight that that's God's playground. When there is no way, when there are no answers, even when your options, you're all out of options and you can't see another way forward, he brings a third option. He brings the miracle, if only we'll let him. And that's it's mind-blowing. God was just saying there to me going, I'm here, I want to do this in your life, I'm wanting to work, but you've also just got to let me. You've got to go, you've got to do it. And so for me, in my life, one week later, I was granted an interview at my first choice school. A week after that, I received an acceptance offer. And two weeks after that, I was awarded a partial scholarship. <laughs> miracles on miracles. And I just want to end tonight asking you a question that, what might God do for you if you'll just submit to him?